Kia ora e te iwi and welcome to The Chew. Coming at you from the Pūdako studio here in Te Atamira in Queenstown, New Zealand. Ko Aratown Dad TNA. And today we are chewing the fat with Julian Noel. Kia ora, Julian. Kia ora, Corey. Kia ora. Nice to have you here today. We've been meaning to have this chat for some time now, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, we have, we have. But, you know, we say it, it always happens at the right time. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And today is that right time. Yeah. So um, what I'll get you to do is yeah. just introduce yourself. Mm. And also we're going to talk a little bit about um, about where you're from and yeah. and where you grew up. Mm. Oh, gee, that's, a, that's an interesting big question. Mm. Yeah. So... Um, um, I guess I fuck a papa back to uh, around the Dargaville region, right? Uh, specifically the Kaihu Valley, right? Uh, my mother uh, was a Nathan. Okay. Uh, her father was Honair Nathan, right? And uh, it was about four or five generations of us living in the, in the Kaihu Valley, right? So Nati Fatua, Nati Torahina, um, and uh, ah. Yes. I knew there was a reason I liked you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> as, as one of my aunties tells me, don't forget that I'm also Nazi Fatua. Yes. <laughs> and um, and then in in terms of um, um, growing up, I spent a little bit of my childhood up 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 and around there. Right. But um, most of my childhood uh, was spent actually in the welfare. So I was institutionalised at around four or five, and then it was a kind of a, it was a recurring theme through nearly all of my kind of early life. Wow. So I would spend time with my mum. Yep. My father kind of disappeared. Yep. Um, and then when I was about nine, um, mum remarried and she remarried a very wealthy Englishman who lived in Malaysia. Right. So uh, she took then took us out of uh, the home and foster homes we were in, and we went and lived in Malaysia for a couple of years. Okay, wow. and it was yeah, it was it was exactly okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we've gone from being like poor as church mouses to to uh, waking up in these like massive mansions wow. with okay. servants and chauffeurs and like our garden was seven acres. And it's like That's crazy. It was it was crazy, and it was it was it was really quite difficult for my stepfather to adjust because you know being a kid and being Maori, everyone was my friend. You know, of course, of course. And and <clears throat> so you know, I'd, I'd be going and hanging out with because uh, we lived on a rubber plantation. He managed rubber plantations, right? And so I'd go and work. You know go and make friends with all the locals' kids, Yeah, you know, and they were all super poor, you know. A lot of them, I'd go around and they'd invite me in for lunch. And there were, it was, the, 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 it was mud floors, you know. Really? And they'd be cooking on a, on, on, on over, over a fire and they would feed me. And then I'd invite all of the kids back to my place, of course. To the mansion. You know? Yeah, back to the mansion. <laughs> and he came in one day and, oh, man, he was so pissed off, you know. Really? Kicked them all out. You can't bring those kids here. We've got to maintain the boundaries and rah, rah, rah. And oh, I'm going, wow. I'm nine, and I'm going. They're just my friends. They're my friends. Yeah. You know? So <clears throat> so we were there for a couple of years, and um, that marriage kind of dissolved. Um, my mum was really good at that. <laughs> and, and then we uh, went to Australia. So you can still hear I've got quite an Australian accent. Yes. And then it was back into the welfare. So the wow. rest of my kind of childhood was in and out of institutions, foster families, till I was about 16. And then I kind of went out on my own. Did your own thing. Yeah. yeah. And then I decided um, that what I really wanted to do was be an actor. And in order to do that, I had to um, be eligible to go to um, university to right. study. Um, right. And I hadn't even finished high school. Right. Like when I was 16, which was the legal age in Australia for leaving school, the uh, principal called me into his office because I was rarely at school. I was always wagging it. Yeah. And uh, he said, look, you're 16 today. I said, yeah, thanks. He said, happy birthday. I said, oh, <laughs> did you do this with all the kids? <laughs> no, just, just you, yeah, Julian. Yeah, just the special ones, you know. <laughs> and, then he, and then he said, you know, you can legally leave school today. He said, you can legally leave right now. Yeah. And I said, what, really? 
So I said, was he encouraging you to, or was, oh, he, look, it, was there a hidden message in there? Oh, I thought it was pretty blatant. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh. and so, I took the I took the option. Took the offer, yeah. yeah. And and within three days, I had my first real job, right. and I was making money, and I was really enjoying that. Great. And um, so, up until I was about eighteen or nineteen, I thought, you know, I don't really need an education, you know. And um, then, because I wanted to go and study acting, I went then went back to school, and it was really hard. Yeah, um, I bet because I I I, I couldn't. I couldn't string two sentences together in you know, really? writing. Oh, and, right. um, but, however, I did get through, and then I was accepted uh, in, into university to study acting. Yeah. And then after that, I then applied for one of the one of the kind of premier acting schools in Australia and was accepted. So nice. I moved, moved to Melbourne. And then um, I worked in theatre and film and TV um, as an actor. Then I got tired of uh, a starving for a living. <laughs> uh, you know, eighty percent of actors are yeah. out of work at any one time. Yeah. And then I, 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 I came up with an idea to start a business. Okay. And I invented a hair product. Um, I had nothing to do with hair products. In- I, invented a hair product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where did the hair, where did the whole idea of inventing a hair product come from? I'm I'm really good at picking trends. Right, I gotcha. You gotcha. know, and I'd been overseas and I'd seen people buying these hair products. Right, you know, the, you know, cool groovy packaging. Yeah, you know, made guys look really smart, and a lot of women were buying the same things. And so I came back and I thought I'm going to import them. I thought. Right. That's crazy. You don't know anything about. <laughs> about and, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, why should that stop me? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and then I got in touch with the company, and they said, um, oh, we've just signed a um, uh, a distribution agreement with someone for Australia. And I thought, oh shit. And then I, after a day or two, I thought, well, why don't I make one? So that's how it started. Wow. And I had that business for 14 years. 14 years. And then I I ended up selling it in in, uh, 14 countries around the world. Um, Crazy. I worked with Vidal Sassoon's in London who helped me expand and design a whole range of products. And um, they went on and won all of these awards. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I had a great time um, traveling the world, and they were used in the fashion collections in Rome and London and Milan and New York, and you know. So you know, um, parking the actual success of all of that to yeah. the side there. Yeah. Were, were you was was hair products like an interest of yours? Like I, I get that you came up with a trend idea, yeah. But was the whole idea of the hair product business was that of any interest to you before that though? No, not at all. It, it was just following the trend. Yeah, this is a thing. <clears throat> yeah, right. Wow. So I think the thing that really inspired me and continues to inspire me is is intuition, and yeah. and you know when you get a good idea. Like so many of us do, yeah. we all get these great, fantastic ideas, but we don't follow through on them. Yeah. So I've always been, because that was what actor training was about. You go into rehearsal, you get a good idea, and you work it, and you work it, and you work it, and you develop a and character around it, it right. and you're refining this intuition all the time. Mm. So that's what I did with these hair products. I just, I just kind of, I fell in love with designing and making things that were beautiful and making things that were natural and were good and recycled and sustainable and were good for people and the planet and ingredients didn't harm people. So that's what really excited me. I, I love the story. I love it because, you know, it's so hard to step out of your comfort zone. There's so many of us, we we sit in our bubble of yeah, comfort yeah. and we, we don't want anything to change. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, we don't yeah. want anyone to eat the cheese. We yeah. just want to stay yeah. in our bubble. But really, if you just take a step out of that, there's yeah. a whole this other world that opens up. So um, I love that story. Mm. And it more so because, not because of the success, but because you said... This is a trend. I don't know anything about hair products. Yeah. I can see where it can lead. Mm. That it can lead somewhere mm. successful. Let's do it. Mm. I mean, mm. that takes a bit of. Um, uh, you you obviously had to take a bit of a risk in doing that. 
No, um, there was no risk. I no. didn't have any money. Um, I started my business on two cre- credit cards. The bank wouldn't give me a loan. Nice. So I'd never had a credit card before. I was in my, you know, I was in my kind of late twenties. Yeah. And being an actor, you know, money was money was you, you got used to getting by with nothing. With not much. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so I went to the bank and asked them for a loan, and they said no. Um, because all I owned was a uh, at that stage was a bed and it was a single bed um, and I owned a really good stereo. <laughs> that was all. I didn't even have a car when I started. Yeah, you know? right, right. And uh, they said, "Oh no, you don't have any collateral." I didn't even know what collateral meant. <laughs> <coughs> that uh, that means assets. If you if you if you if you're a bit like me and don't know what that means. And then I was walking out of the bank manager's office and I looked up and there was a little sign there about sign up today for a credit card. And I stopped and I thought, oh. And I turned to the bank manager and said, "Can I get one of these?" <laughs> and he said, "Yeah." And I said, "What's the credit limit?" He said, two and a half thousand. And I went, "Can I get two? <laughs> And he said, yeah. So I started my business, yeah. And I ended up selling millions of dollars of these products that I invented. It was kind of like... I mean, that, see, this is this is the thing that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? The bank mm. goes, you don't have any collateral, yeah. we're not giving you a loan. <clears throat> yeah. But, well, can I can I get a loan through this other thing? Yeah, yeah sure, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, so, um, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Making other people's money work for you. Yeah. And, and I also think that it does speak to, uh, I think, um, Māori smarts. Yeah. You know? Totally. It, it really does. And it does, to me, show at a deeper level, you know, how things are systemized really stupidly. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, being Māori is, although I didn't grow up near the Māori community, I didn't grow up near my family, I'd always felt Māori. And, right. and I always related to, the, I could see things that others couldn't. Right. You know, on right. so many levels. Yeah. And I've since come to learn that's part of the Maori psyche. It is. You know? It totally is. Yeah. We're adaptable. We've always yes. shown ourselves yeah. to be adaptable yeah. people. Yeah. And um, what I notice, so just picking up on that, yeah. um, what I notice, I've noticed a lot of people in my life who were on the wrong side of the tracks, if yeah. you like. Yeah. So they stayed on the wrong tr- side of the tracks. But when I look at some of the stuff that they got up to, even though you know elements of it were were borderline illegal, mm. let's just say illegal, mm. um, you look at the effort that they put into some yeah. of that activity and you're like, <clears throat> you are really, really smart mm. in figuring all this stuff out. Yes, yeah. it's on the wrong side of the law. But I'm like, why don't you use those smarts in a, in a true business sense mm. to... Similar to what mm. you did, right? Mm. You're just natural intuition about mm. trends, mm. about what can work, mm. um, and working hard to get there as well. Mm. There, there is a lot about the Maori makeup that mm. I think, I personally think, would fit well into the business world, mm. um, as you've proven, mm. right? Um, yeah. Now, so we, you, you've already talked about how, you know, how you are as Maori. Mm. Um, has already become a benefit for you in the business world. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And um, mm. and so, what about Maori? To to your um, in in your opinion, what about us Maori? Mm. Are those unique characteristics that that can um, work well within the business community? Oh, that's such a great question, Corey. Shit, that's a good question, man. <sighs> You know, I, I, I think, um, you know, with so many, you know, every culture has a different perspective on reality. Yeah. And, um, you know, the world is dominated by Western thinking. Yes. You know, our education, our financial systems, business structures, political structures, social structures yep. are so dominated. And they're very rational. They're yep. very much from they here. They are. They are. And there's an incredible disconnect from nature, <laughs> from you know, from 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 um, from the Fenua. Yeah. Um, and there's a disconnect f- around family and human connection. Yeah. And I think those things 
are a real strength now, being able to connect to the land and also the world of the tūpuna. Yeah. And that we recognise that there are layers of reality. Yes. And that the Western world is only one strata. Yeah. And there is an incredible amount of depth. Yeah. And when you drop into the more spiritual side of life and you're guided from, from within – Synergy, synchronicity, all sorts of, you know, um, happenstance can be created from there. And I feel that's really part of the Maori psyche. Right. The ability to flow through these other realms. Yeah. To listen to the land, to listen to the ocean. Absolutely. To listen really deeply to what you, what's been talked about, you yep. know. Yep. Um, and, our, and the way we process information yep. is very relational. It's very... Um, yeah, you know, from the Western perspective, it's seen as very feminine, where the, the yep. feminine, as opposed to masculine, yes, <clears throat> that a lot of Western culture is very masculine. It's yep. about do as you're told. Yeah, you know, yep. my way is the right yep. way. It's con- command and control. Yeah. it's about being alpha and yes. all of that. Yeah, like that yeah. male sort yeah. of. Um, that ego-driven thing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, we as Māori and also islanders and indigenous culture, we think as a community. Yeah, that's right. You know, and yep. we're listening to one another. Um, and that opens up a whole other way of doing things. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you on yeah. that. It's, um, I think... You know, we get caught in this Western way of thinking, yeah, where everything yeah. is. We can only mm. deal with what's directly in front of us mm. in a in a physical reality. Yeah. We don't really think of things at a, at a spiritual level or mm. or in different planes, mm. um, and it, it it becomes nonsense mm. in the Western, mm. uh, you know, the Western mm. way of thinking. Mm. It's because these some of these things may be not so tangible, so mm. it's not easy to measure them. So, mm. like, oh well, that's humbug. Mm. Like just. Go to work, do your nine to five, mm. you know, um, be a good proactive member of society, mm. you know, take your family to the beach on the weekends. It's it's just this is mm. rinse and repeat yeah. life, right? And sit on the towel. Yeah. That's yours. That's <laughs> yeah. yours. You yeah. know our, that that's now your land. <laughs> yeah, that's your right. towels there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still territorial. Yeah. It's still imperialistic, everything, you know? Everything is territorial. You know? Yeah. And it's very much a, a, a selfish approach to life, right? Because yeah. um, you're celebrated in the Western world by the things you collect, mm. by your yeah. your personal achievements. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's all about the me and what's yeah. good for me and yeah. how I stand out as an individual. Yeah. But really, you mm. look at the Māori world, and not just the Māori world, I think it's an indigenous sort of viewpoint, yeah. right? It's about the collective. It's mm. about what's good for us as a community, as yeah. a whole. So, you know, it, and, and it, it's um, one of the things or one of the important kind of messages I like to bring is um, how, how, how hungry the world is for an indigenous approach yeah. and how hungry they are to really understand it. Um, and, and I don't mean that just in some tokenistic way. I was invited no. to a, um, uh, this big symposium in, in Canberra, and this was about four or five years ago now, and it was... Um, <clears throat> it was a big gathering to talk about the internet and one of the women, Dame Judy Hall, she had been part of the cohort along with Tim Berners-Lee who had invented the internet. So she was right there at the inception of the creation wow. of the internet and a lot of the founders of it were really incredibly upset about where it had gone yeah, and how absolutely. it had been utilised and how people, you know, the whole thing with algorithms and people's uh, identities being taken away from them and people, um, um, marketing companies and political parties getting access to all of the information yeah. about them. And um, so this was a gathering of 120 people um, who... Let's let's redesign the web. What's the next web looking like? Yeah, the next version. Yeah. And <clears throat> at the end of the three days, <clears throat> she stood up and said, one of the major pillars for the next iteration of the um, uh, internet needs to be based on indigenous protocols. Right. And I went, whoa. And there was, I looked around the room and they're all... You know, bright, white, middle class, yeah. you know, and I'm yeah. kind of going, so I put my hand, and there was me and my good friend Angie Abdilla, who's, um, she's an Aboriginal woman, yeah. and uh, I put my hand up and said, so 
what do you fellas reckon an Indigenous perspective is? Yeah. You know? What is that to you? And then she just reeled it off. She said, well, Indigenous cultures consider, you know, seven generations ahead, seven generations back. Before. It's mm. about it's about community. It's about connection to nature. And so they had really done a deep so dive true. into it. Yeah. And then they invited Angie and I to stand up and give an impromptu presentation. Really? Yeah. Um, around it. What, what is it? To be indigenous in this in this white techno world, and Angie, I, I I say you want to Google this woman. She is amazing, Angie Abdilla. Right. And um, I call her the brightest woman I've ever met. And she she works right at the cutting edge of technology. Okay. And she was hired by um, Google Global to be the um, to sit on their on their core team right. to to hold the indigenous space. So, you know, there are companies out there that are really seriously, yep. you know, onto this, this new wave, this new way of being. Fantastic. Yeah. And so, did you have any trouble with the impromptu speech? Like, were you, did it catch you off guard or were you just ready to go? Oh, yeah. No, just... shit, man. I'm always ready to go. <laughs> it's like, no, it was just totally right. It was totally easy. Just yep. stand up and just, you just share what you know. Yeah, you know? right, right. But one of the things that <clears throat> that I did once um, Black Diamond, which was my hair care product, I then started a um, a, uh, a community of business owners. Right. So, and then I would run regular events, and I built a, a glo- end up building a global community of entrepreneurs who were doing good in the world through business. And then what that morphed into would I would be doing like uh, global webinars and global summits, which would be attended by thousands of people online. So I'd call together some of the brightest and sharpest minds across um, education and technology and employment and business and have caught it all with them. Nice. You know, and we'd get the latest information. What are the latest trends? Where is the world really going? Yeah. You know, we had we had Nobel um, Prize winners come and come and talk to us. It was like it was phenomenal, man. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and so you obviously you're so passionate about it, right? Mm. I, so I can see that through your exploits, through what you did with your hair product. Yeah. Um, then you've you've obviously worked out that you had a you had a knack of um, of mentoring in business as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another aspect of of what's is, what's passionate for you. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm I'm um, what I'm really passionate about um, is seeing really good businesses really come to the fore. Right. And um, I work with businesses, Mm -hmm. but I'm really very selective. Right. And um, so one of the reasons why I came back to Aotearoa was to work with Māori businesses. Right. Especially ones that want to go global. Fantastic. Because that's my background. Right. So I'm currently working with um, three Māori businesses. um, Nice. I'm around that. And... um, yeah, so I've kind of taken everything that I've learned and then also learned from these great people who were part of or still are part of my kind of global community. Great. And that's Shine Global, which is the entity that I started back in 2012. Great. Yeah. So let's get on to that. So okay. you, you have your own entity, Shine yeah. Global. Yeah. And uh, so can you tell me a little bit more about about what Shine Global is or does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, 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 when it first started... Um, it was uh, we would do we focused on live events okay and so we'd hold events in Sydney and um, it was that I'd I'd find people who were doing amazing things out in the world right you know and they were mostly people you'd never heard of I never really liked the celebrity approach yes Um, I, I, I want real people you know ordinary people doing extraordinary things and I would profile them great choice and so we'd we'd hold these events and they were kind of like, um, kind of based on TED, you know, the, yes, the TED pres- So the they'd TED. be like, you'd have 15 minutes to kind of tell your story. Right. And they'll do a series of those in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'd involve the whole audience. Okay. So we'd, we'd just, I'd f- be facilitating conversations. So what did you hear? What have you learned? What's next for you? How can you apply this into your, into your business or into your life? So we would have... Because what I realized was 
there's people in the audience who are just as smart as the people on the stage. Of course, of course. And I go, we've got this back to front. (laughs) You know, if I've got six speakers here and they've got 20 years of experience each, that's 120. But if I've got 300 people in the audience and they've all got, you know, 20 years experience, that's thousands of years of experience. Yeah. So I kind of turned it on its head. Right. And then would get input from the audience. Right. And then that the shift that that made in people was phenomenal. Right. All of it, because we give our power away. We do. We think, oh, you know we everything. Do. I yes. know nothing. Yes. The guy on stage. Yeah. yeah you, I bow to you. Yes. 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 So I had this little, um, <laughs> I made up this little um, saying that we take the sage off the stage. Right. Right. You know, and want to empower people and want to work with the notion of collective wisdom. Yeah. You know. And it's interesting that you mention that because that's what I find in that we do in Māori spaces. Exactly. You know, when, yeah. when we do things like whaka whanaungatanga, so when yeah. we come together in a hui, yeah. we all take turns to introduce ourselves and tell our story. Yeah. And so you're always getting to a point where, and this always happens for yeah. me when I'm sitting in a room doing whaka whanaungatanga. I'm always struck by some of the unique stories that you hear coming yeah. from people. And, you know, you take people at face value. Let's be honest. We're, we're just human. Mm. So um, you, you take someone at face value, you hear their story, and you go, I would never have guessed that, you know, mm. you were a, a go-go dancer in, in Copenhagen. So, you know, it's just like <laughs> you, 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 yeah. you hear everything. Can um, you introduce me to this? <laughs> <laughs> this is, she sounds really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> but you can you 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 can just never pick someone's experience. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. you have to not take people on face yes. value and and yeah. take time to listen to their story. Yeah, beautiful. And it's uh, mm. I I fully understand what you mean when you said the whole thing shifted. Yeah, because when you give the power to the people who yeah. are supposed to be the submissive people, mm. it. It fully shifts yeah. it. It's like, yeah. wow. And people in the audience are suddenly turning around and going, this guy's my hero, mm. you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. uh, so uh, fantastic. So this is part of what you do with um, with Shine Global? Yeah, okay. I, that's right. That's where we were. That was the question. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then out of that, I started running um, mastermind groups. Okay. And uh, so, and my, my and then I... Um, so uh, what is a mastermind group? Oh, okay. So um, uh, the concept goes way back to um, uh, Napoleon Hill. And he wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. And he created this notion of a mastermind group where exactly what you just talked about, you get a bunch of people to come together who are all highly skilled. Yeah. And then they talk about where they want to go and they're sharing with one another how they can get there. Right, right. Gotcha. So I would then call all of these amazing entrepreneurs and change makers and game changers into groups of, say, 10 or 12. Right. And they'd be from all over the world and would meet online. Um, um, and I would facilitate the conversations. Right. And there w- it was all about where do you really want to get to? Yeah. Where are you currently? What are the best actions you can take to get there? Right. So just keeping the, the process really, really simple. Mm. But underpinning uh, all of this was um, I was trained in, uh, in intuition. And trained, trained. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And how do you how do you utilize like study the brain, brain science, the functionality. What is intuition? How does it function? How do you live according to it? What does your mind say in response to intuition? When you get a great idea, there's always tension. Why is that? How do you resolve that tension? And it was all designed about how do you really create, basically from your heart. You know, what's your heart asking you for? Yeah. And then what are the steps you need to take? And where will your your mind or your brain take you off course because or for whatever reason? Yeah. So I did a great deal of training in and around that. So as a coach, that's really what I work with is, dude, where do you really want to get to? Where are you now? And let's approach it intuitively rather than from your ego. Right. So, right. yeah, so that's my... That's been my essential methodology since about 2005. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. And um, now I could just go, I could talk to you for ages on all this because this is quite interesting to yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. just um, uh, doing all this 
continuous improvement yes. of your personality. Things yeah, like beautiful. talking about intuition. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard anyone explain, you know, the the science of intuition. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's assumed to be well to me. It's assumed to be just this this um this spooky natural thing that yeah. is is mm. better in some people than others. Yeah, and, you know, but yeah. never really stopped to think that you could analyze what this thing called intuition is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, yes. And the, and the less an analysis you do, the better. Yes, I Because it's really, it, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love it. I love it. I, I run courses on it. I'm currently um, doing a collaboration to take my work actually global. Wow. Through, uh, okay. Online. So collaborating with um, a couple of people here in Queensland. I know one person here in Queensland. Nice. The other person's in, in LA. Yeah. And then a mate of mine who's got global reach online. Right. Um, so, yeah, so it's really about how do you create, how do you, you know, like we all have a vision in our own heart about our lives. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is what I feel really drawn to do. Yeah. But how come I never get any closer? Yeah, yeah, how yeah. How come yeah. it's always out of my reach? Yeah, right. So this whole process is about how how you how you create what it is you really love. Yeah. You know? So it's not just business. It's about personal fulfillment. Yeah, right. And to me... That's why <laughs> why I like to work with entrepreneurs because yep. they help to make a better world. Yeah, right. You right. know. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so it is. It, it is. It, it is a process. Right. And and you're right. Everybody has intuition. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't all know how to listen to it. Yeah. How and to then check we into don't it. know how mm. to work with it. Mm. And there's just really simple steps to follow. Mm. They're super simple, and really? um, changes. Everything, man. Oh, God. I think yeah. I need to spend more time with you. <laughs> I've got trouble with my own intuition. <laughs> oh, we all do, man. We all do. I mean, I've been, as I said, I've been really focusing on this in 2005. But there's still there's the daily challenge, you know. Yeah. There's the old part of me that says, oh, you can't do that. It's yeah, yeah, not yeah. possible. Yeah. And all the beliefs that kind of yeah. run around inside me. Yeah. Because be our beliefs are always counter to our intuition. Really? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then it's how, okay, then if, if a large part of my psyche is kind of at odds with my intuition, how do I resolve that? Right. And, that's and where, is, yeah. is, is that kind of the difference between a log, like a logical and analytical approach versus an intuitive or gut feeling? <clears throat> is, is, well, it, it's, it's the two things that really cut across intuition. One is our thoughts. Right. And the other is our emotions. Yes, 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 right? of course. And, yeah. you know, from my perspective, our thoughts and our emotions don't tell us the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as much as we like to believe, oh, Julian, you just don't know what my life's like. <laughs> you know, no, no, it's <laughs> never going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got it too. Oh, we've <laughs> yeah. all got it. We're all human. <laughs> yeah. But then it's just a matter of listening really intently and yeah. then – um, there's a process called um, inspired action because inspiration, you're listening for, there, or there's always a simple next step moving you towards where you want to get to. Right. It's always a simple step. Right. But mostly, from my experience, everyone overthinks it. Oh, yeah. Everyone, oh, I can't do this. I should do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, ring Uncle, I'll ring Uncle Bob. And, oh, no, Auntie Mary. And, oh, no, I can't do it today. I should do it tomorrow. I've got to go for a swim. I've got to have a swim because then I feel – and then I better, <laughs> better have some biscuits. Oh, a Tim Tam, some chocolate, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it after my cup. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it after my cup. Right. Oh, I'll go for a walk first. I've got to be in the right state of mind. Yeah. Oh, no, today's not the right. I just feel today's not the right uh, day. You know? Oh, I laugh because that's my story. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. terrible at yeah. – uh, I'm a terrible or, or I'm really good at procrastination. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, And yeah. I come up with these excuses yeah. all the time. Yeah. So oh, I don't really feel like I'm in the right, in the, in the right headspace to do that right now. Yeah. So I'll leave it for now. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'll feel better yeah. about yeah. it in, in, yeah. Uh, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so the lawns just keep growing and growing, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But um, – yeah. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic chat. Now yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift the conversation sure. um, towards. Um, so this interview is a collaboration with yeah. Kuma, yeah. with um, the Southern Māori Business Network. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm I'm gonna focus a little bit on Kuma at yeah. the moment. And I understand you do work with you do a little bit of work with Kuma, or you engage with them at some level. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm working on a, on on a project with uh, two of the, two of the local board members, right, Carmela and and Maria. Yes. And um and then uh, recently Tipani Korkiri uh, approached. 
approached me to come and be a provider uh, of services to them. Nice. And I'm also part of the uh, regional uh, business partners, which means people who work with me can get like grants oh, um, wow. in order to pay for my services, which well, I think is oh, really? fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. a great. That's that's a that's a nice, neat little circular thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Come to me, we'll find yeah. you funding. Yeah, pays for it, and yeah. then we go around in the circle. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, and so I've only just and uh, you know recently kind of dropped into into Coom. I've been going along to all of the meetings all and the meetings. meetings yeah. uh, low, you know, and those meetings are fantastic, yeah. man. They're really, really, really yeah. good. Great place uh, to network. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And just you just kind of feel part of a community. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, I and I think that's really important. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, and I, I think <coughs> it's one of the things I've loved coming back to 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 New Zealand is the level of community support that's yeah. there. You know, and which just leaves Australia for dead. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that. Um, that's fantastic. And so, um, do you are you aware of some of the things that Kuma does within the within the the local region in particular in terms of helping um, Maori businesses? And if if so, or, or if not, mm. um, do, is there anything you think they could be doing better um, to help Maori businesses in the region? Well. I come from a, from um, business events organising, right? So I I come with a particular view, view. Yep. on 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 how you really engage right. um, local businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what Coom is doing is absolutely fantastic. Great, but we, we we can all we can all get better, get better, you yes. know. And and I, I think it's the level of uh, it's the level of engagement, right? And and for people to. Because actually, I was just a couple of weeks ago. The um, Queens Queenstown um, Council invited me to this meeting right. of about thirty businesses right. to talk about the future of business in Queenstown. Right. And um, so I trot along and listen to the council, and they they shared what they were doing and what their processes and and everything. Um, and uh, it was a really good meeting. Great. And they've got a couple of really good ideas. Yeah. And then I stood up at the end of it and just said, "Look." You know, um, I don't think your level of engagement with the actual businesses is strong enough. Cool. And I, I said, um, these are some really great ideas, but I can tell you the development of business in, in Queenstown, um, the council will have very little impact on that. Yeah, right. And that some of your ideas are very, very high risk with very, very low return. Right. Then I talked a little bit uh, about what I did and how I'd bought one of the projects that I – uh, worked on was we took 120 high net worth entrepreneurs um, to Antarctica. Okay. And so uh, one of my mates hired this great big boat. <laughs> it's like put down 900,000 bucks to oh hire this boat. Oh my God. And then he and I toured all of Australia to uh, get people get to come, people. Yeah, get the people to come on board the boat. And there was, um, there was like a billion dollars worth of business done over two weeks on that boat. Crazy. Uh, 38 new companies were formed. About a half a million bucks was raised for charities. Yeah. And uh, like lifelong friendships were made. And and I, what I said to the council was, that's the sort of model you want to be looking at. Right. I said, bring the business people together. Don't go and tell them yeah. this is, you right. have to fit into this because that'll fit like one in, one in 50 yeah. businesses. Yeah. yeah. What are the other 49 going to do? Yeah. So I know they're thinking about potentially me coming and doing some work with them. So, nice. Yeah. Great. Well, um, uh, So to come back to Kuma to answer your question, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think more stuff like that. Great. You great. know, more, more kind of who is more. together. Let's get down and dirty. Where yeah. are you really? Where do you really want to get? What do you really want? Yeah. Let's get some real action rather than just talk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, so that's, you know, and that's uh, just not Kuma. It's like. No, it's anywhere, yeah, really. You know, yeah. Chamber of Commerce need to do that, yeah. so many. Yeah. Once you get that piece in place, then you've got a community yeah. of people who are really paying attention to one another. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, uh, as, as the saying goes, we need to do less hooey yeah. and do more dewey. More dewey. Yes. Do it, yeah. Um, yeah. So full disclosure, I actually work for... Queenstown Lakes District Council. Oh, do yes. you? Oh. <laughs> I'm employed full time by them, ah. but, but I have nothing to do with the business side yeah, of things. I'm yeah. not a yeah. decision maker at all. Yeah. I'm quite happy stuck in a corner doing my IT work. So, yeah. um, 
but yeah, it's yeah. um, it, it's great to hear that you may yeah. be doing some work with the yeah, council. I'd really yeah. love to as yeah. well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. So we uh, we're trucking along a little bit. We're Gotten close to time, but it's just we've had so much, um, so much mm. that I really wanted to talk about. So you've done a lot of other work mm. on. The, um, so you're an actor as well. Mm. So are you still doing a little bit of stage work at the moment? Yeah, I've um, I, I, like I, I walked away from it about thirty years ago and right. kind of fell in love with business. Yeah, and then coming back, um, I, I, oh, this is a really cool story. So I felt inspired to start writing a book. Right. And um, uh, a really good friend of mine in Sydney, beautiful, beautiful woman, Maggie Hamilton, she's, she's a fellow Kiwi yeah. and, a, and a great writer and also very psychic. Right. So I, I, I wrote some stuff and I got in touch with her and I said, Maggie, would you be my mentor? And I sent her some of my writing and she rang me back and said, oh, look, yeah, yeah, absolutely be your mentor. said, look, I don't want to freak you out. She said, but your ancestors are here. Oh, wow. And she said, they're saying they want you to come home. You don't have to come home to live, but they want you to come home because they want you to write their stories. Wow. And she said this, I'm telling you, all of me was went, wow. So within two weeks, I jumped on a plane and, 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 and come back to check it out. But I had a bit of a conversation. I'd never really, really connected into the world of the ancestors. Yes. But then I thought, well, I'm going to start talking to them. Yeah. So I said to them, look, I'd love to come back. I really would. If I feel it really strongly. I feel the call. I hear you. However... You got to help me with some commercial opportunities. Okay. You know, I can't just come back and just, you yeah. know. Yeah. So if you help me with that, I'll I'll come back and do it. Great. So like this blew my brain. So two weeks later, I've landed in Auckland. This friend of mine is was um was part of a um, um a business accelerator in 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 Auckland called Centrality, working with blockchain technology. Wow! I step off of the plane, and within within two hours, I'm talking to three emerging businesses, advising them on how to pitch, how to grow and develop their business. And I was like, okay, dudes. We're on the same team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ever since then, business opportunities have always just flowed. Really? Yeah. So I came back, started writing um, this book, which is a series of stories from my childhood. Yeah. And then about a year ago, I thought, oh, this should be a one-man play. Yeah. So I've started, uh, it's still a work in progress, but I've been performing it. I performed it here in Queenstown and also in Auckland. And then I took it up uh, to Northland as well. Wow. And, uh, And doing it again tomorrow night. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, you're, you're obviously a man that wears a lot of hats. You've got a lot of feathers in all of those hats yeah, too. Yeah. So um, another aspect that I, I've, I've noticed that you've been involved with is um, – a bit of poetry as well. Yeah. So you um, yeah. did you attend and were you part of the the local um, uh, writers? Yeah. Um, mm. They they had the writers writers festival writers festival here. Yeah, in I was. As well. Yeah, I was. I was really chuffed. So poetry. I'd never written a poem before in my life. Of course not. Yeah. The, this is a theme I'm, I'm picking yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to just go and try yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and because when I thought, okay, I'm going to um. I'm going to perform this play, and I hadn't been in front of an audience as an actor for like decades. And I thought, I've got to get experience. I've got, to. and the only thing I could find in Queenstown, there were no acting classes, there were no, you know, groups that I wanted to belong to, and but there was this open mic poetry. Right. I thought, well, how hard it could it be to write poetry? <laughs> And then stand up. At least I'll be in front of an audience. I'll be able to play, explore different themes. What do they like? Oh, so that's what I did so oh far. Oh, my God. So for the last 18 months, every month, um, both here in Queenstown and also in Wanaka, I'd write poems and stand up. And people say, oh, they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the women who heard me, she was on the um, the board for the Writers' Festival, and so she selected um, a, a handful of local writers right. to come and read at the at the at the Writers' Festival. So that's how I came to to, to read at the Writers' <laughs> Festival. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. You know, something that won't surprise me is in two years' time, I, I hear you're doing brain surgery somewhere in, in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, how hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So, oh, that, that's like, the, you're a fascinating guy, obviously. <laughs> you know, um, I... I, I actually went on online, yeah, and uh, and I I watched you on um, on the TV show Prisoner. Oh, you did! I it. did! Oh my god! <laughs> I did! Uh, how the hell did you find I that? I found them. I found oh all the episodes. God. Yeah, yeah. You're carrying carrying the camera that's around. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! That's wild. <laughs> I think I've only ever seen that twice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So wow. Um, yeah, I've got the footage. I was going to show you at oh, some point. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, 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 it was great. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Um, you know, my my. Not that I enjoyed it. Maybe mm. I did. I'm not sure. But certainly my family watched that show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Lizzie and uh, B. B. Arthur. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, yeah. She was larger than life character. Yeah. Even I remember her from back yeah. in my childhood. Yeah. So um, it was fantastic to see you oh my on God. that TV well, show. Well, yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah. So I also, I, so I did a few episodes of Prison and then I did, I did some work on, on Neighbours as did well. Did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was like, oh, my God. God, <laughs> man, that was like straight out of acting school. So I was kind of like late twenties at that stage. Yeah, right. Yeah. Far oh, out. oh my god. Yeah, that was so funny. Yeah. Um. Now, uh, you've you've got a new. Um. I think you've got an event coming up. Sold to stage. Is that is is that something that oh, you're working on no, at the moment? We we did. Um. That was Hud Rapater and I. We oh, did that. Okay. We did that. Uh. As part of the Kuma Business Week. Right. Yeah. Right. Storytelling. Right. You know, how do you create a story? What makes a story? Fantastic. You know, so both personal, but also applies to business as well. Yeah, right. You know, right. So yeah, so Hud was talking about like it was phenomenal what he did yep. around tour the play yep. it was like yeah, it was fantastic, and and what he generated within the community was yep. extraordinary. Yep, really extraordinary. You know. Incredible, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, some of you guys are just so prevalent in the community right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, I had had as well. You know, yeah. I don't. I just don't feel like um, some people get as much recognition recognition as they should. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for doing some great work within the community, yeah. yourself included in that. Yeah. But um, so we're we're getting close to wrapping up our our chat now. Um, I feel I feel like. I need to have a, ch a longer chat with you. It'd be, mm. it'd be great to have you back at some stage mm. so we can uh, dig deeper into some of your other experiences. But um, for now, I just have one uh, one quick fire question mm. for you. Sure. And um, hopefully it's an easy one to answer. So I'm going to ask this question. Um, if you could go back in time mm. and you could give some advice to your 18-year-old self, mm. what would that advice be? Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm. Everything's going to be great. No, or, no, just don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Do you think back then you had problems with worrying or overthinking? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a, I was a cot case. Yeah, yeah. I was having panic attacks and and uh, yeah, it was tough. Right. Like mental health issues and right. Yeah, around that time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. And um, and so. Uh, more importantly, yeah. if anyone wants to get a hold of you, yeah. what's the easiest way to contact you? Ooh, um, email. Email? Yeah, yeah. Yep, sure. Yeah. Julian at shineglobal.com.au. Great. Yeah. That's perfect. Mm. And any any last comments before we wrap up? Mm. I think um, stay strong. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, the best things happen when we stay strong. Yeah. And to not bow down to the the darker thoughts or yeah. the less healthy thoughts yeah. we have that creating a life from 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 strength. Great. As opposed to need. Yeah. Yeah, so creating what you really really want. Fantastic. Stay strong. Great advice. Great yeah. advice. So Norada e mihi atu nei ki a koe. E taku whanaunga mm. no Ngāti Whātua. We've had such a great chat today. Thank you mm. so much for joining me today. Mm. Um, and to you, e te iwi, if you have any questions for Julian, mm. if you have any comments you want to make, pop them down on the chat box below. 
and remember to like the channel subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time on the chew matewa